Now we're really good to go. Now we're really gonna hit the road. It's pretty frozen. The visibility is dropping a lot and the roads are getting much worse. All of a sudden the snow just stopped. The water. <laughs> Alright guys, you just watched part one. We're in the same spot we left you there and now we're dealing with frozen blocks. Maybe uh they just gonna stay here. Maybe yeah. not. I'm gonna use my trusty Leatherman. It's pretty frozen. Wow. The Leatherman is a mighty tool. Oh, Maybe not that mighty. Oh, it's moving. There we go. Good job. Wow. Solid. My fear is that the plastics would break, but I guess they're strong enough. They're already broken. <laughs> these things have <laughs> these things have been through a lot. Your blocks will not break if they're already broken. Two more. so they'll stack together. So the roads seem to be mostly wet, so they salted, which is good. And we're gonna try to make it to the Tetons. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But uh, originally, well, I still want to go to Jackson Hole. It's like sure. we'll epic see. place to go. So we might go to Jackson Hole first and try to find propane. And uh, then we'll head up through to Tetons into, what's the other one? Yellowstone. Yellowstone, because that's really our ultimate destination. But the weather has changed. It's supposed to be one degree tonight, which is no a bueno. little colder than I'm comfortable camping in. I'm afraid that that's going to freeze something. We'll see. Yeah. But uh, let's hit the road. Gonna be too bad. No, actually, we're heading, we're heading south. Oh, really? We're heading west, then south. Well, that's exactly where we're going, then. So, since we're so close to, to Jackson Hole, it'll probably be super beautiful in the snow. I don't really like driving in snowstorms. Well, I love driving in snowstorms, but not with our home on the back of the truck. I don't like the idea of any potential accidents. So, I'm gonna be really cautious with all of this. But uh, it's getting pretty snowy. Yes. So, we're gonna head off now. but we've gained like five, six, seven hundred feet in elevation and the road has completely changed. It's now completely covered in snow. The direction we're headed is the most well-worn and there is salt and sand, but apparently not enough to keep up with the, what appears to be snow drifts blowing across the road. Was unexpected we just passed the continental divide which i don't know that's a pretty good sign at least we're now we're west 
But now we're going down a 6% grade. I don't like doing that in snowstorms with a 14,000 pound truck. We'll just go slow, see how it goes. six miles more now and the visibility is dropping a lot and the roads are getting much worse I'd like to just keep on going I want to get out of the mountains and into some kind of valley worst case we could hang out in Jackson Hole I think one of our biggest issues is gonna be propane we're gonna need more propane my guess is with the temperatures last night and the temperatures that are coming tonight which is gonna be about zero degrees we're probably going to be going through a half a tank a night, which means we're going to need a fresh tank, you know, every day, every couple days. I think it's time to leave the mountains. <laughs> it's just, winter camping is, is so much more difficult than fair weather camping. So let's, let's get out of here. But we're still going to try to see the parks on our way out. So as we were cruising along, all of a sudden the snow just stopped. We're like in this little lull of snow. And I can see further ahead and further behind, it's snowing pretty hard. Winter always makes such a mess. Everything's covered in salt and ice and snow. My rear view camera is all but useless now. just dropped down past about 8,000 feet and all of a sudden the road's clearing up. So I think we're getting down low enough that it's not as snowy. It's still 25 degrees out, but the roads are just black, wet roads, which is perfect. It means we can pick up the speed a little bit and not worry about sliding around too much. Just for the record, I actually love driving in snow. I grew up doing it, I really enjoy it. But I would rather do it with a spare vehicle, something that's not quite this big and something that we don't live in. So that's my, my biggest concern is that if we do have a problem, if we crash, if we get stuck, it's, it's our only home, it's our only vehicle. So I, I don't take any, any risks at all driving this thing now. It's because I'm an old man, I'm 40. No more fun driving in the snow.
So we've kind of made it into the flat areas in the valley leading into Jackson, which is only eight minutes away. And this is exactly what I was hoping for. The sky is kind of clearing a little bit, but there's still snow in the distance. The mountains are mostly obscured, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful valley with mountains on either side. Can't really go wrong with that. Look at that. Look at that. It's so nice that the snow has stopped and it's literally it's so much warmer and so much clearer. We're hoping to do, I guess there's a loop that goes around Grand Teton. It looks like the roads are open according to their map. they shrunk they lost 25 percent of their uh, total surface area well so this is what we came to see the tetons we have grand teton and we have middle teton and the glacier and this is what we actually see just clouds still beautiful though well after our drive we got our aldi venting right now we got some ice build up here That looks rather nasty. Not too bad though. So we're in Jackson Hole, we're at a gas station, and they do propane and diesel. So I'm gonna get our, probably like half full. How was that? Uh, well, I'm actually curious, because we don't often stay in weather this cold. So that was one full day, like what, noon? Noon to noon, basically. Yeah. With uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 degree night. So I'll be curious to see how much this takes. I bet it's going to be about half. All right, well, if you want to go get the propane guy, yep. I'll do the diesel. Try to separate tasks. Makes everything go much faster. Looks like Sasha got someone to do our tank. Well, so far, it's such a beautiful place. We'll get all stocked up and then we're gonna pick our route. Um, we're gonna go up through, I think the backside, the western side of the loop road that goes through the Tetons and then we're going to head up towards Yellowstone and find a place to camp. There's a lot of cell service here, so that's good, but I don't know how it's going to be between Teton and Yellowstone. We'll see. So, 70 bucks.
Bear tooth pass. Okay. No, B E A R, like a oh, grizzly bear. I got gotcha. you. Ah, gotcha. all right. Bear tooth pass. That's just one of the gyms. And, and uh, Chief Joseph's Highway, north of Cody. Right. Cutting across northeast to Cook City. We just talked to uh, a ranger, and she said that there was one road that's leading, like that leads to Yellowstone. They just reopened it. So that yeah. uh, presumably the one, the main one that goes through. Yeah, from, probably from um, Moran Junction to mm -hmm. go north. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. through Coulter Bay, through the rest of Grand Teton National mm -hmm. Park, you've got a flag ranch. Otherwise, you can go around to the west side, okay. come in at West Yellowstone. Okay, which okay. one's better? Well, I, you know, it depends. You, if you want to, yeah. if you want to see it, yeah, check out. Go up, just go up and check it. That's check what, it. Check it all out while you just look at the chart. We're gonna have a couple of days, so we're gonna try to just <laughs> travel around as much as we can, see what we can, and then head out. Whatever it is, you, you're on the cusp. They're gonna be cutting off. If you can squeeze it in. Squeeze it in, otherwise you'd be forced to come back and see us. Yeah, again. well, we want to we want to head uh, yeah. north northwest from here. Yeah, yeah. so one point six gallons, not too bad. Like 4.6 gallons normally. So that's not bad. No, so we could we could easily go two days on a tank. But well, we have our our propane and diesel now, so we can kind of carry on with the rest of our our route. We're trying to do the I think scenic loop road. I believe it's about 42 miles long. So now that we have enough diesel, we can turn it around and then find a place to camp. It's 1:30. We basically have time to drive up through T Teton, stop at a few places. We still need to make breakfast, and lunch, something. <laughs> right, I'm hungry. Yeah, that's right. And then we're going to find a place to camp, and I'd like to do that be before dark. Blizzard, so yeah. we have like, call it four hours. Yeah. yeah, four hours before we really need to be pretty, be done. So we'll see what we can see between now and then. Sounds like fun. Yeah. All right. So we just found out that they have water here too. So I'm pretty opportunistic with water, like I've said in previous videos. So. We only need maybe 10 gallons, five gallons. Might as well grab it while we can. Now that we got our water, that also gave us time for Sasha to make a couple sandwiches. So now we're really good to go. Now we're really gonna hit the road. of road I've ever encountered. It's huge, deep potholes. <laughs> they're, they're really deep. I'm hoping this clears up. We're, we're trying to take this kind of back road up through the Tetons and it says it's narrow and winding. No RVs are allowed. We're not an RV, we're a truck hauling cargo. <laughs> but if the road's gonna be like this, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going walking speed. This deep. They are very deep. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised that they haven't graded the road at all. Well, I feel like for the most part, the road is fine. It's just those sections with potholes. Yeah, that are... you'd, you'd think that that would be part of maintenance. Maybe it's just because it's end of the year and they're they're not going to bother for the winter. Maybe. But these these potholes take a while to form. This is not like a few weeks. All right, so this road is just, we can't even go like 
a half a mile an hour. It's too hard. And I don't want to go to do like 15 miles of this. So we're going to turn back and take the normal highway. What do you think? Is this, this is the most pothole world we've ever been on. That's probably the worst road so far. They're plentiful. They're really close to each other. They're scattered and they're deep. So I'm actually getting into the pothole and getting stuck. Like I have to then use the throttle to get back up over it and then I drop into another one. So it's really, really harsh to drive and it's it's not really pleasurable. No. So we want to see everything, but maybe on a different road. We're super happy that we have a truck camper and we can easily make a three point turn and leave the area that we don't like. That was terrible. <laughs> That's absolutely horrible. Those holes are so deep. Our camper was squeaking so loud. I was, I was actually getting a little bit nervous. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, no, you get there. into this rhythm with the potholes and it just starts getting worse and worse and worse. I wear heavy. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Clear the water is. So we are at Jenny Lake, and while the mountains are a little obscured by clouds and snow, it's still really beautiful. Thank you. No pressure, right? I feel like I'm actually excited that we're here during the winter because I feel like most people come here during the summer, mm -hmm. and there are less people here, which is always good. And I feel like we could always come back here during the summertime, but we wouldn't come here just for the winter experience. So no, this is pretty cool. This is more of an accident. I'm, I'm quite happy we're here. It's just that it's a little bit more challenging. And we haven't seen it during the summer. So maybe we'll come back someday because yeah. it's a pretty amazing place. One of the best national parks in the country. Yeah, I'd really like to go swimming. <laughs> it's probably tough to see with the camera, but it is absolutely crystal clear. Just very cold. Very, very, very cold. Yes. What you can't smell is the pine smell. Awesome. This is a lake, but it looks really low, but it's absolutely beautiful. We have this crow just hanging out. He's actually pretty big. It's 4.30 and we're starting to make our way out of the park. We're heading north towards Yellowstone and we're gonna try to find a boondock spot. Not a lot of options, especially anything with cell service. In most of the places that we're finding on I Overlander, well, you can stay there, but everyone says there's signs that say no camping. So we generally try not to do that, but we may end up having to because there's not a lot of options right now. Yeah. A lot of stuff's closed, and uh, when we get into Yellowstone, there's no service there either, so. And we're also trying to camp someplace that is not too, like, off-road in case it snows again, so we don't have to worry about, you know, making our way out. Right. We're still enjoying the scenery. Look at look at this place.
This is a lake, but it looks a little dry. And then, I'm gonna drive up. We have a little friend up here. I think I spooked him, but that was a big bird. Spot. Look at he just flew over there to that one. Apparently he likes to hang out on those signs. Well anyways, off to the boondock spot. We don't know where to go. We get like an hour to go. That'll get us there around 5.30. We have to pay attention to cell phone service as we go because we'd really like to have some internet. Yeah. Cell service and weather conditions. So we will check in with you shortly. <laughs> into a lot more snow and what appears to be sleep bouncing off the windshield sounds kind of cool So, we found this amazing spot. It took us a few minutes to get leveled. 
It's like there's nothing flat here, so we had to use blocks, which it's just messy and gross when it's wet and muddy. But <clears throat> that's all right. Got leveled, and the snow seems to have stopped temporarily. Yeah, we still have those clouds over there, but I'm not sure if they're going to be full of snow, possibly. We'll see. The radar says that there's not a lot of snow coming, but I feel like out here it just comes on its own, even if it's not on the radar. So this is a national forest campground and it's actually free. Woohoo! We looked at the um, little stand that was saying like no fees. So we like that. I think there might be fees during <laughs> like spring and summer, but in the winter they, yeah. they leave it open. <laughs> we are literally the only people here. And the coolest part is that we have full service, which means we can work, we can watch movies, we can do whatever we want. Actually, to our surprise, we're right between um, Great yeah. Teton. What? <laughs> Teons. Teons. <laughs> we're right between Grand Teton. We met a guy at a propane filling station and we were telling him that we were heading to the Grand Tetons. And he's like, well, at least you can say it right. I had a guy show up the other day that called them the Teons. And we, it's That's been a joke enough. ever since. Let's go to the Teons. So we're right between the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. And to our surprise, we have we have a Verizon and AT&T, and both of them are working extremely fast. Which That's amazing. Which is a rare treat. So yeah, it's a perfect little spot. It's not too far from any parks. We're not too far from the services. We filled up with propane, diesel, water. We're really all set. And we're like, I think, about 30 minutes from Old Faithful. So. I'm actually thinking, considering we're doing Yellowstone for two days, we might go explore Yellowstone and come back here tomorrow night because this place is absolutely perfect. So this time it's going to be warmer. We're not camping on top of the mountain. It's not It's not going to be brutally cold. No, and we're only at like 6,500 feet, so it's much easier to breathe now. We can breathe. That's exciting. So yeah, this, is, this worked out really well, but sometimes it takes us like two hours just to find a spot. We tried a couple service roads, they were all closed. So when we were driving here, we were thinking that it's gonna be close too, but we just got really lucky. All in all, it was a great day. Um, we didn't get to see as much of the mountains because of all the overcast skies. And boy, that bumpy road we were on was the worst, the worst, the worst road, the worst we've, road we've ever driven, except for when we were in Costa Rica, but that wasn't with our camper, that was with a rental car. But uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty that horrible. Was that was bad. That'll leave some memories for us, definitely. It's a miracle that our camper is still standing, honestly. It was so bad. So I think that's it for this episode. I think there's probably going to be a third episode because we're going to Yellowstone tomorrow. So make sure that you get subscribed and click the little bell icon so you get notified when we post the next video. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.